Welcome to Sharing Your Vision. We have a very special program for you today. We have a very special guest from Newark, New Jersey, Pastor Jeannie Santos. Hi, Pastor. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Sister Elaine. I'm good. I'm good. Really excited about um, this opportunity to be here uh, on your show. And I thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, I'm very excited. We're going to talk about your books, your wonderful books, and also that you're very pretty. You're very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> You. Yes, you. you're wonderful. Uh, from the first moment uh, that our friend Vicky um, connected us, uh, it's been exciting uh, to talk to you. Thank you for the book. I received it. I read the book. There's a lot of content, important information that um, God is going to lead us in this program to bring some light into circumstances and situations that we go through, especially us women. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Well, uh, I, I felt a wonderful connection uh, with you from the first time I, I spoke to you on the phone. And uh, so I am really excited. And I was like, oh, she sounds so lovely. Amen. Praise God. So uh, really excited about that. I'm very humble. And I thank you again. And yeah, and thanks to uh, beautiful Vicky also as well. Amen. Very beloved. And I'm I'm just humble. I'm, I'm just excited and nervous at the same time because usually I'm the one interviewing. And uh, so this is something really cool. That's great. I'm glad that uh, this is your first time being on the other side. And um, well, we'll see how it goes, but I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. Uh, it, it already is. So um, what I wanted to ask you, first of all, is when did you begin writing? Wow. Uh, I come from a family that everybody's kind of artsy. Uh, and I started writing when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I was always into writing. I enjoy writing poetry, enjoy writing songs. And then as I became a young adult, um, I wrote my very first book, which is My Psalms, Thoughts from the Heart in 1998. I've just revised that book. Uh, like it's gonna be two years now, I believe I revised the book. And uh, I started, it was it was all poetry at the time. And the, the pastors uh, where I was at, it was a sister church we used to help out. And they used to send us to the sister church. They motivated me to put all my poetry in the book. And we basically they did it there in the church, self-published. It wasn't like on any uh, store or anything to buy at the time. I used to just sell them if I went to minister somewhere. Um, and then I just started giving them away. And I gave them all away. And I never thought that I was going to revise it or continue writing books um but the lord kept speaking into my life and every time i went somewhere somebody would would, would speak into my life and tell me they saw me writing many books and so i kept on writing and just putting away writing and putting away till like three years ago the lord started challenging me and started speaking to me about what have i done with what he has given me to do what he has put in my hands and thus then I was finding it hard to even revise that first book so what I what I did was a, a dear friend of mine uh Nelly she said to me Jeannie everybody's always quoting uh you they, there's so many quotes that you share on Facebook and the social media why don't you put them all into a book and that's that's when I got the courage to to put it all together, and then from there flowed everything else, including the revised book. Well, you have right now currently five books. Um, mm -hmm. There is an excitement going on because there's a new book coming out, but we're going to talk about that later in the program. There's one here that the audience is seeing, um, and also uh, for the audience that is only hearing through the radio, it's called Breathing Again. It's a beautiful book that I have in my hands. It's a treasure. 
Um, and I just like to read the information that's here um, on the cover. And it's, it's a wonderful cover. It's a, it's a woman and uh, her arms are spread apart like in freedom, like, like in a stage where she feels like she's uh, free to express herself. And it says here, he thought he'd keep me bound, broken and destroyed. Now, when I read that, I get <laughs> goosebumps. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk about this book in particular. Okay. And the, the reason why it was written and the stories that, that carry it within. Wow, well, that's a book that became, how can I say, the toughest book I've probably ever written. Elaine, seriously, this was the toughest one. And the thing about it was that all my other ones, they are all derived about something that I went through, everything, whether it's quotes, whether it's poetry, there's always something that's linked to something I have lived. And I feel that uh, a little piece of me is a little piece of those out there around me watching, listening. There's a piece of me and a piece of you that can relate and come together in these books. But this book was very personal. And it was really hard when I kept feeling from the Lord that I needed to write this book. And it was scary. It was scary at the same time because I went through such an experience that seemed like it, it was never ending because even after being out of, of this toxic uh, domestic violence situation I found myself in, I kept being harassed, kept being insulted. To this day, I'm still being slandered. And um, I it took a lot, it took a lot of courage. It took a lot of boldness to put it out. And it wasn't, uh, as you may see, it's not a like a tell all, let me bash somebody kind of book. I said, okay, Lord, if I'm going to put my personal life in these pages, I'm going to put it because I want another woman to wake up. I want somebody to be healed. I want a broken woman to become whole again. I want a broken man that's doing the abusing, or even there's women that do abusing too, for them to come to their senses and get the help they need and, and stop hurting people. Cause that saying hurt people hurt people is true. And I said, and I wanted to be efficient. I want to be able to just not leave them with a story. And I know there was a lot of people that just wanted a tell all story, but that's not what this book is about. It's not a tell all story. It's sharing things that really happened, putting on my heart, especially that, the person who, who caused the damage and caused the hurt at the time went around saying his version of the story, but I wasn't trying to vindicate myself at all. But if people want the answers, they could just go to the book and stop calling me or emailing me or inboxing me or assuming. But in there, I put resources, uh, things that I thought would be helpful for women. And most of all, I wanted the ministers, the church to wake up. Because there's, as, as you may see, I quote different articles in there. There's been this case of domestic violence that's, that's gone on for so long even within the church. And it's been covered up. It's been covered up. And, and I was one of them who had to experience where ministers swept it under the rug. You know, it was, it was, it was really, it was really uh, some experience there. And it had to be written out. And, and not only... Was it written out to help others? But I discovered as I was writing it, it was helping me heal. It was helping me um, come to the grips of what I just experienced and what just happened. So Elaine, if I tell you that every time I wrote, I broke down crying, crying, crying. Sometimes I had to stop at a chapter and I would go for days just battling things and my emotions. And, and hurt and anger and God just delivering me. It was a, like a self-deliverance kind of thing going on here. Then at a certain, excuse me, certain chapter, um, when I started promoting that the book was going to come out, all of a sudden, I'm sure, I don't know if you got, you read the whole book, uh, you got to that chapter, then here comes this person going on a Facebook Live 
and they're trying to stop the book from like going out and I guess he found out about the book that I have written a book and started you know like attacking through through social media and that paralyzed me for a while I got so scared and I was scared for my life too because I have received threats in the past by this person and and there were still current threats coming in through messenger and inboxes and stuff and uh, I, I used to I used to work with with uh, a family because I, I also um, secularly I work with children with special needs, and she's the one who helped me. The mom of the child helped me uh, get self published. She taught me how to do it, and she was telling me, "No, you cannot stop writing this book. You have to go on, Jeannie. God has called you to do this. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. God is with you, Nelly. Uh, you know wherever she is, the Lord bless her." And, and she and she just uh, kept on encouraging me and and then I started writing the the finishing of it the end the last the last pages through prayer a lot of prayer but I was like at some point it felt like I had to relive everything I went through everything was so crystal clear so this book means so much to me because it brought a self deliverance. And I and, and the women that have read it tell me, oh my gosh, this is incredible. Some of them are like, oh, I went through that, or oh, I'm going through that. And and sometimes we, even within the church, women are quiet, especially if they're married to a minister, if they're married to a leader, even in politics, it happens. If you're married to somebody who's known, and they're abusing you, you're scared to even go forth. You being may feel guilty like you know you're going to hurt that person but yet that person is hurting you to the point of paralyzing everything in your life and so it was a book that needed to be put out there for the wholeness of a woman for the wholeness of a family for the wholeness and deliverance of, of, an, of an abuser for ministers to open up their eyes and their hearts and start finding different ways to deal with domestic violence within the church. Pastor Jeannie, through deliverance, were you able to free yourself 100% from not only what you lived, but from this person in total? Oh, I'm absolutely 110% away from that person. You know, um, but I still like every now and then uh, get messages. Uh, like the other the other day, I was working on my on my website, and I found emails, horrible emails that were sent there that I had not even noticed were there because it's the radio website and that we've been off the air for a little bit, and so I was revamping things and to go back on and and I said, oh my gosh, they just don't stop. And um, so I, uh, when it comes to seeing this person, no, I don't see this person. I have no contact with this person. I desire no contact. I pray that God brings total deliverance and wholeness to this person. Um, but I completely am like, that's, that's, you know, God, God bless me after, after the fact. And as a matter of fact, today, it makes two years that I met an amazing person who's in my life for two years now. And so the Lord delivered me um, and healed me uh, in, in, in those aspects of, of hating. Of, 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 I, it got to a point where I, it was just like this, this, I don't know, I cannot explain what was over me, but I kept letting this person abuse me, kept feeling that because God is love, I had to continue being that that rug and let them walk over me. But I got to a place of liberation where I was like, wait a minute, I don't deserve this. I am a child of God. And so God delivered me from that mindset and that guilt that the church had put upon me, you know, and me being a pastor, how can I lead other women and, and, and speak to them about being delivered from the emotions when I was in bondage? You know, so as you say, you see the title, the subtitle, the subtitle goes, goes both ways because I was, I was saying this person's not going to hold me bound. It's not going to keep me broken and whatnot, but neither is the devil because the word tells us that the devil comes to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. And, and, and in this situation, that's what the enemy was trying to do. And yeah, I can tell you, I, 
can I just say free, free, I'm free at last. <laughs> you know, thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. And I'm able to talk about it. Sister Elaine, if you would have probably tried to interview me on this two years ago, there was no way I would have been able to get through probably without having a meltdown and breaking down, crying. Maybe even a year ago, uh, when the book was supposed to, uh, have gone out. It was a year and a half ago, but the book came out a year ago in October. And I think even when the book first came out, I was now going through the motions of God, why do you have me write this hard book? Like, why did I have to relive that? And I was like going in my head, you know, and not visiting certain places in New York. Cause I was afraid this person's going to run into me. He's going to try to hurt me or kill me or, or something. It was that real. But now I can actually say, you know what, it's time. It's time to open up about it and talk about it because I'm, I'm, God is with me and God knows the whole truth and he's delivered and he's healed me everywhere. It hurts and he's so faithful to us and he's faithful to all those hurting. I come in agreements with you uh, that the Lord is with you and that he has allowed you a time where you can open up not only through this wonderful precious book but also to be able to talk to people to express uh the, the, that 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 the lord can actually deliver you from uh, every single thing that the enemy through people because obviously he uses people to hurt other people just he has his own army that he uses, just like God has his army. It all depends on which side are you on. But that is just a wonderful opportunity to listen uh, to you uh, say these words that edify uh, the lives of others, uh, like you briefly explained. And also the Lord has allowed you to obtain different uh, parts of ministry. You're a pastor. Um, obviously, you are uh, able to do conferences and just talk a little bit about all the things, all the wonderful things that the Lord has allowed you to bloom in, grow in. Wow. When it comes to that, I get emotional <laughs> when it comes to talking about what God has allowed me because one can only boast in the Lord. He gets all the glory and honor. I find like, wow, Lord, in my unworthiness, you found something worthy. I am still trying to figure you out, Lord. <laughs> you know, this is amazing. But I've had the chance uh, to do so many things, so many things, you know, and, and there are times that the Holy Spirit has to, when I feel unaccomplished about something, and maybe somebody's watching that's feeling unaccomplished about something, the Holy Ghost will take you back and say, what do you mean you're unaccomplished? I have, I have given you so much. You have accomplished so much through me and in me. And so I have been able to, to be a conference speaker. I've been able to coordinate conferences uh, for years. Um, I gave my heart to Jesus November 10, 1985. And I wasn't getting it like, right. I mean, none of us are perfect and we all have this work in process until we in his presence. But I'm talking about, I was like in and out of church for, for a while. And then when God finally started working in my life, I started with church ministry there. I was a Sunday school teacher. Then I became a lay worker, then a local missionary and all this stuff started expanding. And I remember a word that, that my pastor at the time, Pastor Donna gave me. And, and, and the Lord told me in detail that I was going to do great things. And he told me the things I was going to do. And I thought it was funny. I said, that was me. And that was like in, in the fall of 93. And then, well, me, yep. He decided to use every broken piece of me. Because when I say broken, I have been broken in so many ways broken in so many ways i've gone through so many things and there will be many other books because there's been so many things i've experienced but he has allowed me through that to to be able to preach the gospel to evangelize to the street outreach i feed the homeless i clothe them um i opened up the well christian center in december 2014 which was an interesting time it was a time i had been abandoned and i had done interim work before that 
and God was just calling me out. If I went to visit a church and I didn't know who the people there, the pastor would call, call me out and tell me how God was calling me to pastor. It was, I couldn't hide anymore. And I've been a chaplain since 2002. I, I, and I, um, I'm a chaplain with United Chaplains of Faith and Hope with the president of Zelvia Crespo, Reverend Zelvia Crespo. And uh, I, I, my gosh, I write. I do radio. I opened up a good radio station on February of 2010. But before that, I was like for three and a half years uh, with the voice of God on the air, La Voz de Dios en el Aire, but they had shut down in Brooklyn. And I continued to work. That's a whole other uh, testimony. And yeah, so I've just been able, I've been able to do TV uh, with Reverend Dr. Raymond Rivera. In the past, he had a show in the Bronx uh, called Church and Community. I started co-hosting. So God has allowed me all these things. And it's not because I'm la nena linda. It's because he felt like it, because he had a plan. Sometimes we think that we are so like we earned it. I can truly say there's nothing I have earned. Everything has been by grace. And his faith, his favor over us because of faith, because of loving, because of um, loving him and surrendering to him, all that we are and all that we aren't. So I am pretty multifaceted. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a whole bunch of things sometimes at once. I don't know how I do it, but the grace of God. And I'm excited. I'm excited to be used by him because when I leave this place, which is temporary, I want to hear... Well done, my good and faithful girl. Come here, my girl. I want to hear him call me my girl. I want to hear him just just be happy with me. And I want to take as many people as I can with me to the kingdom of God, that there be no soul left behind. So that's why I feel that every method, everything we do, whether it's social media, whether it's writing, whether it's poetry, whether it's uh, helping other ministries, whatever we do, we do it as unto him. We do it joyfully and we do it precisely because that is going to win souls. That's going to liberate somebody that is going to bring wholeness. There's so many people that serve God, but still need wholeness and why not? So I've, I've been broken up like a torn up, like a loaf of bread. I feel at times, but you know what? It, it was to feed the multitude. So I said, well, Lord, if I had to go through that, then go ahead, feed the multitude with all my, all the, all the broken pieces of me. Feel the multitude and get the glory. And I'm excited about what he's doing. I am here, whatever he wants to do. Listen, Sister Elaine, I don't have like a huge church. <laughs> we have, we, we went from like 20 something to 10. And, and then we had gotten like three different prophets that came into the church and said, God's going to clean house. And then the house will stay empty again. And, and then start over. And we had a permanent place. Since, you know, we were there like for three and a half, four years. And then that place was no more because the person who was renting to me doesn't have that place anymore. So we started renting spaces uh, in the city. And we got a chance to meet different people and rent hourly. And so we're in Midtown, we're in the East Village, even Jersey City in New Jersey. And uh, we don't have a permanent building. But we don't stop. There's no doors closing here. Because even if it's for one person, whether I get 10, whether I get 100, if we did was for one person, that is worth it. I have traveled. I have preached in other churches. But I'm still, you know, some people tell me, why don't you just keep traveling and close down the church? No, because I there's people that are in need. And I know I got something that somebody needs. I didn't go through all of this in vain. Hallelujah. I love it. And I commend you for it. And yes, keep moving forward because Amen. it's it's God that leading you to go forward. So definitely. Amen. And I and I receive it and I perceive it. But I want to ask you, out of all these wonderful books, which one are you most passionate for? Oh wow. Sometimes let me see. It, it's it's it lingered between uh, the breathing again and the first first book I ever wrote that was revised my Psalms. Um, I have Pearl Drops, uh, the series. I have Volume One and Volume Two. I got Bessels e Hugs, which is love notes from God. I literally like 
prayed and prophetically wrote love notes in there for somebody to read from God. But I think it's about it's been a balance between the My Psalms and the Breathing Again, but this book that's coming up. This book. I this is the one that's oh my gosh, it's tugging on my heart. Let's talk about that new release. I'm really excited about it. Amen. Amen. Wow. That that one that one is another hard book. There was another hard book to write. Um, it's already written, it's right now being edited. And um, so I'm hoping to release soon. There's been some delays. Uh, but God knows the proper timing with everything, right? Well, that book basically it's funny because I'm a New Yorker, right? And in New York, a law just passed the beginning of this year where full term abortion is allowed. Some states were uh, trying to legalize after a baby is born to just inject them and euthanize them and, and that's it. Awful. But I was writing the book before that even came along. And when I began the ministry uh, years ago in 1998, I began the outside of the church ministry, the para ministry under the covering of my pastors. I remember we named it Main New Ministries. I had a team of girls and we started with a um, music uh, skit, a musical skit uh, with where my little girl, my daughter Kayla at the time was a little girl, she's now 28, um, played uh, a little girl who was talking to her mom who wanted to abort her through a song, a Kathy Tricoli song. And so we went around and that opened up doors. We winded up on, on, on the, that's how I ended up meeting Dr. Reverend Rivera. Uh, also one of the reasons the, the book and in that play, we did, we did it on that TV show back then. And um, we went to different churches with this pro-life message. But along the way, so many other things have happened. And um, in this book, I open up about something really personal. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, be, be like direct to you, woman that has had an abortion. Amen. Right now that is listening or is watching. There is room at the foot of the cross for forgiveness. And when God forgives, he completely forgives. He doesn't hold anything against you. If you haven't forgiven yourself, forgive yourself. And this is what this book is about. It is a book about redemption. It's a book about finding forgiveness, allowing God to really do the complete work in you if you have had an abortion, because I did. And I share my testimony in this book. And it was really hard because people have this the, the, you know, those that follow me have this certain image of me and then they're like, she did what? But it doesn't matter to me. You know, some people are afraid to share their testimony and I get that when some people say, oh, but we got to be careful because people judge. But if we are so worried about what people think, people will never know about how God can deliver, set free, uh, restore and redeem you. So I started writing this book. And I speak about my experience and my experience with forgiveness and my experience with guilt and my experience with condemnation. And then I turn around and now I'm speaking about life and why God needed that child in your womb. And I have three wonderful young women that volunteer their stories in that book too. Amen. And so it happens to be that all this is happening. I had no clue that this was going to take place in New York. And here I am writing the book. And so now the big thing I'm so excited about is that the, the, the book came out on time. Okay, basically to come out on time with everything going on with this legalizing full terms abortion. My goal is not to just sell the books. I want people yet yeah, to buy them and give them to somebody that's going through something or use it as material to bring healing to somebody. But I want to myself print out as many books as I can. And go around the Planned Parenthoods. And the, it, it, it's amazing because I recently, I have saw the movie Unplanned that spoke about the girl that, that she used to work for Planned Parenthood and everything. And I said, wow, everything like goes together. Like we're like all in the same spirit. And I want to go to New York City and I want to give out these books. 
for free. I just want to give them out. I've spotted a few uh, Planned Parenthoods in Jersey, in New York, even in PA. And I, I don't want to go harass anyone, but I want to make myself available to give out these books. I want to start uh, a knitted campaign. I want to start, I want to do a knitted conference where women can come and receive deliverance and healing from that abortion they had. And I want to be able to help any young lady or any woman that, that is feeling pressure to have an abortion. Um, there's women, I have met women that their boyfriends pressured them, I have, uh, that their parents took them to the clinic. Uh, there's just so many stories. And sometimes even I, at a point, got very religious and judgmental, not knowing that there's a story behind it. So why not try to talk her into not destroying that little life without making her feel she's a monster but bringing her to the foot of the cross or if she already did that why not restore her why not deal with her with compassion and show her that god can forgive her and i'm just gonna if, if you allow me i don't want to like i know you got questions to ask me and we have a little time probably but i'm gonna just share this one thing that happened to me because I, I i i do like i said i i had abortion and in 1989, I was at a church. And I say this in the book, so I'm gonna give you a little piece of the book, okay? So you guys, when it comes out, you get it and go and take it to someone who needs it. Praise the Lord. And I remember I was at this church, it was a prayer meeting, it was prayer week, and it was a mission board church I had been visiting. And I was on my knees and this lady, her name was Celia Bonvecino. She's, I don't know, she she was a uh, pretty, high in age back then, so I don't know where she's at now. But this woman of God, she looks at me and she says to me, she calls me out to come to her. She has something to say to me. And and she told me straight up, you, the Lord shows me, you you know, you. she said, you had an abortion. She speaks to me. And I, I began to cry. I said, God's going to kill me right here. And that was something I had done a year before that. And I said, God's going to kill me. And if you want to know why that happened, why you have to read the book when it comes out. I don't want to give it all away. Why I made that choice, which wasn't the best choice. But like I said, when God forgives, he forgives. And she told me to calm down. And I'm trying to hurry with this. I don't want to take up time. But after she told me to calm, basically calm me down, she said to me that the Lord showed her a baby, a little girl crying, looking at me. This woman didn't know me from like, she just had just met me like a few months. She didn't know me from back then. Nobody knew that this was personal. This was private. And she said to me that the Lord said to me that if I serve him, if I serve him all the days of my life, if I serve him, I will one day be reunited with her. And that was amazing because there was no way this woman could have known that about me. I knew it was through the power of the Holy Ghost. So... I, I, I leave this thought with you that, that has had done that, that you keep serving the Lord. He, you know, he's got so many benefits and blessings for his children. And he's He's such a redeemer and such a forgiver that I tell you that not only I'm going to be reunited with mine, but you're going to be reunited with yours. God is really a forgiving God. Amen. Amen. Dini, I want to take this time, if you can pray over the people that are listening uh, and, and I'm sure there's someone out there that this program in a specific is going to reach out to because that's what God does. Uh, we serve Him and we do everything to glorify Him, but we are sent out to do His works. So this program in a specific is going to reach out to certain people around the world that listen through the radio, audio and visual and it's going to touch their lives because no matter what they're going through it may be this it may be something else it's definitely going to touch them and it's going to take them to think to reach out to God and not reach out to man because God is a God of forgiveness he's sovereign God he's a God that can transform your mind your your state your your state of being and give you the hope that you need in order to go on and 
perceive and move forward. Praise the Lord. Well, what we're going to pray. Amen. But before we pray, I want to say, Sister Elaine, you have a wonderful platform here. And God is using you in a marvelous way to be able to bring the message of hope through all these different interviews. You're educating, you're empowering, and you're equipping God's people. And I thank you for saying yes to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And may he continue to use you uh, and, and take this to the east, to the west, to the north, and to the south. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, so let us let us uh, say a word of prayer. Amen. Praise God, Father God. I, I just thank you, Lord God, for for this time, Lord. I'm I'm just humbled to be in your presence, my Lord God, on this show, Lord God. Father, I thank you for your servant, Sister Elaine. I ask, Lord God, that you open up the windows of heaven upon her, my Lord God, and upon her staff, my Lord God, that the presence of the Almighty, the Shekinah glory, may fill that studio right now. And Father God, in the same way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I bind up every principality in the airs, my Lord God. And right now, Lord, I, 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 I order a shift in the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. And that, Father God, you will carry, Lord God, this message, Lord God, through the airways to that dorm, to that car, to that house that living room lord god that that kitchen wherever they may find themselves at my lord god right now that you will reach each heart lord god there are people that are hurting and there are people that are being broken and and think that you've forgotten them but lord i thank you lord god that today you have reminded them lord god that you're you're allowing there to be a breaking lord god and they feel like they're like a loaf of bread broken many pieces lord god you're going to use every piece to feed the multitude lord i ask you reach that woman lord god that's had an abortion that woman that's been abused that man who has been abused that man who has abused that that child that that's not with their parent father god i ask you reach lord Lord God, the ones that fighting some addiction, the one that's that's fighting loneliness, that person that's fighting depression, Lord God, that minister, Lord God, that that's quiet and not speaking about what's really going on in their life because they're so afraid of being judged, my God. I lift up all these people to you. You know each and every one of them right now, watching and listening, my God. And I pray whatever the circumstances, whatever the situation is, Lord God, that you be magnified and glorified, Lord God. Nothing is wasted. Everything will be used by you, Lord God. Father, so I thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, for your purposes will be established, Lord God, in each and every life. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. I come into agreement. That was amazing. That was perfect. And that was God. Thank you so much. Pastor Jeannie, if you have any uh, last words that you want to share, we're at the end of the program. Um, this is the time. Well, just want to say first and foremost, again, thank you for having me here. Amen. It's, it's, it's been great. And thank you all that are tuning in. Amen. Those that are watching all OVM TV and those that are listening to OVM radio, keep it locked in. Amen. Keep on listening. Keep supporting. Praise God. And I'm going to leave you with this. Something I always say is never what it looked like. God has a plan for your life and mine. So stay focused. Stay positive. Amen. Praise God and believe him at his word. And can you give us information as to how to contact you, Pastor Jeannie? Sure. Uh, you can contact me at 201 Six eight eight three three two 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 zero one six eight eight three three two two, or you could write me at Dowell El Pozo at gmail.com. That will be T H E W E L L E L P O Z O at gmail.com. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your time, um, for the wonderful things that you've shared uh, in the space and the time of this program. I do want to invite you to come back there's more to talk oh, about man. there's more Amen. that we can share especially now with the new book coming out and the new book is called knitted Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. So I look forward to welcoming you back to sharing your vision, to sharing more of God's vision in your life. Amen. And uh, it's, it's, it's an honor. And who knows, hopefully I, I, I can, you know, sit across from you and give you a hug. Oh, I would <laughs> love that very much. Actually, Thank let's put it in Thank God's you. presence now and in, in God's hands so it could definitely come to pass. Thank you so much, Sister Elaine. Bessels, he hugs. Thank you. Same here. And I want to encourage you to get this wonderful book. It's just an amazing, it's a beautiful book. It's real life story about Pastor Jeannie Santos and in which she mentioned about being broken and how many of us, if not all of us, find ourselves there at some point in time in our lives. So I do encourage you to buy a book that's going to enlighten you. Someone went through something, but they overcame through God's presence in their life, through God's power. And uh, it's just wonderful to be in God's hands every minute, every hour, every moment of our lives. I want to bless each and every one of you. And again, encourage you to buy not only this book, but many of her editions uh, that she's written and um, it's just going to be wonderful uh, for you to have. Thank you so much. I bless you and uh, just encouraging you through these programs that we do so your life can be better. Amen. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.